I'm going just to use the definition to define it. Okay? Look, it's the so called divergence of Gauss theory. That is a situation that we will find many times. We'll work in a system of coordinates that will turn x1, x2, x3, the basis e hat 1, e hat 2, e hat 3 in the corresponding proper order. Sometimes we'll have a domain, that's something that we'll see many times, a closed domain that will be a certain volume in the space. And this domain SAS will have also something that we'll call the boundary of this volume. Since this closed domain is closed, there is a surface that encloses the interior. Okay? This is what we call, this surface is what we call the boundary of the domain. That boundary will be expressed by this notation. The partial derivative of B will mean the boundary of B. Okay? Then we will assume that we know the normal, the normal at every point of the boundary. Okay? What is orthogonal and unit modulus. Look, by the way, one can wonder what is the sense of the normal. When we have a closed boundary, we will follow the rule from now on. The normal it's also will be always the outward normal, the normal towards the exterior. So, choosing the two possible sends of n would be that way or that way towards the interior. We we just check the sense of the normal, just the one going to the exterior, the outward normal. Okay, well. So let's imagine that we have this situation. We know these are geometrical properties. We know the volume, the domain, we know the boundary, and we know the outward normal at every point. Okay? And now we have a certain tensor field. So a magnitude it can be a tensor of second, third, first, fourth, five order tensor, which depends on x at every point here, the, this tensor changes, okay? And then we want to perform operations like that. We want to make the integral, the volume integral, on all this domain of the, g that is the nabla times a. What would be that? Nabla dot means, what is the word for this? Divergence. So we want to compute the divergence of this tensor entity a integrated of all the volume. Okay? Well, there is a very surprising and interesting theorem that says that if I want to compute, I need to compute the integral on all the domain, the interior of that, it can be replaced by something. Another integral, but instead of being an integral in all the domain, I just it's just the integral on the boundary. <coughs> it's a surface integral. Okay? is a surface integral, and then in order to keep this equality, I have to just look, I just changed volume by boundary. Of course, the, here I talk about differential of volume, here I talk by differential of surface. Okay? And now the kernel of the integral is A is as it is, dot is A as it is, but where nabla was, I just replaced the normal. So that's important, you know. Why is it important? Because sometimes I want to compute, or this tells us that what happens in this integral depends only of what happens in the boundary. So if I know the value of i in the boundary, if I d know the normal of the boundary, then I can compute the integral on the volume on the interior, even if I don't know the value of i a at the interior. That's, that's something that will take advantage in the future. That's called a very important theorem, which is called the divergence of Gauss theory. That was, of course, derived by the famous mathematician uh, Gauss. Look, I could do the something. I mean, there is no name for that, but I could theoretically think of a, a, a differential operation that was placing a in front, the dot product, and the divergence at the right. 
What is the name of this? I don't have any name for this, because we are not going to use many times this. But we could give a name for this. Eh? We have the table, the table operator of A. So we can define that. And of course, we can proceed and find operation for that. Okay. Let's imagine that I want to do that operation. Then the divergence theorem follows the same rule. You can replace that integral by a surface integral, and then I replace the differential of volume times the difference of surface, and then I keep the position of A, I keep the position of dot, and when I find delta the nabla, I just place the normal. So somehow, by replacing in that kernel nabla by normal, and by replacing, I can replace the integral of the volume by the integral on the boundary. Either in that case, or either in that case. That's the Gauss theory. So, this can be generalized very easily. This, the Gauss only proved that when I have here the dot product, the dot product. So divergence, okay? But it can be proven for any of the differential operators we have seen here, or the operators we have seen here. So what about if instead of that here, I put, for instance, the cross operator, the vector product, so the cross, right? It, it holds also. So I just can go here, put the cross, and that's, that, that holds. What about if instead of dot here, I have the open product, the tensor product, the cross with a circle? That also holds. Just replace the, the, the cross operator here, put them here, replace nabla by n, and it holds on. So this is the synthesis. That is general divergence theory. Whenever I have a differential operator, acting, acting means multiplied by some operation, acting with some operation, on a tensor field, any order, I can replace the volume integral <coughs> by a boundary integral just by replacing nabla times n and keeping the other the operator and the tensor constants and doing the operation in the in the in the boundary okay Did that's something that we are going to apply many times it's not so difficult to remember right just i can pass from that's the important part from a volume integra integral to a boundary integral by replacing the differential by normal. And then, of course, I know to know the normal and the boundary, and then these are two completely mathematically equivalent expressions. The only condition for that, of course, is that the dead domain is closed. If it's not closed, it's an open domain. Uh, so this surface, this surface is not closed and it doesn't hold. And of course, this has to be a continuous function. It can be this differential, this operation should exist. If it's not continuous, I cannot take the differential. Okay? But apart from that, that is a very funny, interesting theorem that we are going to use many times in continuum mechanics. Well, one th that is one we can escape. That that's for instance, that's for instance one way to show that. I can do that example. I will do it. Okay. Look, before leaving this point, I would like to just mention some reference where you can find a little more of information there. So go to the reference. There is one reference in the web page, which is the one for Eduardo Chavez. 20 pages, 22, 23 pages. You can read them. Probably some of you will read them very fast. Some of you will read them very fast because you are already familiar with many things. Some of you can take a, li a little longer, but you should be able to read this document in a quite, I mean, at the end of the day, in a quite easy way, in a quite familiar way. You should get familiar, you get acquainted with that document. Because that document, which is the one that you have at the, at the web page, is the one that just condenses what I've said. Of course, you have other, other, other references. You can download the one for Severiago and Colea, but this is more mathematician. So, I mean, I would recommend just to read that chapter, that, that a document which is 
in the web page, tensorial algebra, I don't think the name is like that, tensorial al algebra, that is in the document, look at this name, and then just try to see if you can read that document quite uh, straightforwardly. If you do, then you are ready to continue. If not, you should put additional effort to, 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 to get this in next, next, very short next days. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of something that I did because I thought that you needed it in order to make it easier to you. I could have said, you, we are going to use, to use a language, you just, I mean, help your, uh, do yourself on your own. That's not our way of doing that. We have spent two, four hours, sorry, in doing that for you, in helping you to do that. Now is your time, okay? Now is your time. Next day, we'll start in continuum mechanics. And continuum mechanics means that we are going to the language of continuum mechanics. And if you do not understand the language, that means that you haven't placed not enough of effort in studying that. Okay? So please, next day, we see you here talking language of continuum mechanics.